What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you two things. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to add SAS to your Jekyll project. And then I'm going to show you how I set up my SAS folder hierarchy. I'll also tell you why I set it up the way I do. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right guys, so to get this started, what I went ahead and did was I created this new Jekyll project here and I did that by running this right here, Jekyll new, and then I just named it YouTube tutorial. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna CD into my YouTube uh, tutorial and I'm gonna run uh, uh, bundle exec Jekyll serve. And this should start the server running on localhost port 4000. Let's come over here, load this page, and here is the new Jekyll website. So that's Jekyll set up already for us right there. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open this up in my text editor, Atom. So let's come over here, drag this in here, and open this on up. So once we got this open, uh, it's very it's very simple. There's not many things here, uh, but uh, the whole point of this video is to show you how to add SAS to your project. So there's something really simple that we have to do, and we have to come over here, and inside of our underscore config .yaml, we have to add this this uh, line that says SAS, okay, just like this, and then underneath here we're gonna write. Um, sass underscore dir and then we're just going to write the directory that this will go into so it's going to be underscore sass now you can name this whatever you want right here but for the sake of this tutorial we are going to give this the name of underscore sass awesome now for this to take place what we have to do is we have to come over here and restart our server uh, but nothing is really gonna happen because we haven't written any SAS code or anything like that. Let's refresh this and you'll see nothing here has changed because we haven't written any other code. So let's come over here to our index file and let's just change this up a little bit. So I'm gonna make this, uh, let's rename this to be .html instead of markdown. Um, and then sure, we can, we don't really need to run any of this. Well. Let's leave the layout, okay? We'll leave the layout, but let's go ahead and put in h1 and just say hello world and let's end the h1 and let's go ahead and see if we see any of this. Do we see it? There is hello world. All right, so I'm gonna give this a class of YouTube tutorial, just like that, and now we need to go ahead and actually write our SAS. So to do that, uh, if I pull this config.yaml file up again, you'll see we have our SAS is looking for the SAS in underscore dot SAS. Well, it's looking for a folder named this within our uh, the root of our project. So if we right click here and create a new folder and name this underscore SAS, this is where it's looking to get that. Now we could name this underscore Bob and it would have to be underscore Bob here, but it would work. Uh, but again, for the sake of this video, we're just gonna name it SAS. So what I like to do is um, I like to have my own folder hierarchy here. So what I like to do is create three folders and the first one is gonna be zero dash base. The second one is going to be one dash modules and the third one is going to be two dash layouts so what i generally do with these here is any sas that i write in this base is something that's going to uh, be for the entire website as a whole so whether it's some styles variables anything like that that is generally what i put in my base uh, directory here what I put in my modules is if I'm writing SAS for a module, uh, so like if it's the navigation or it's the footer of the website, it's something that's used uh, multiple times in different places of the website, I will put that in the module section. And then in the layouts, that is generally where I write all of my code for all of the pages uh, that need some CSS that isn't written in the base or the modules section 
of my SAS folders. So to get this to work, we need to do a few things. First of all, we need to have a file in the uh, root of our underscore SAS folder, and we can just call this styles.sass, just like that. And what we gotta do now is we need to come over here into each of these folders and we have to add a file into each of those. So I'm gonna say zero dash base underscore directory dot sass. Okay, so I'm gonna write that just like that. And we're gonna essentially do that for each of these files. So then I'm gonna have one dash modules underscore sass. Sorry, not underscore sass underscore directory dot sass don't want to mess that up and then in the layouts we will do the same thing new file this will be two dash layouts underscore directory dot sass all right so now what we need to go ahead and do is import each one of these directories into this styles dot sass so we're going to write at import and then we're going to write uh, zero dash base because that's going to look in this folder forward slash zero dash base underscore directory just like that we don't need that extra at and we're going to do this for each one of those directories so we have uh, one dash modules and then we need to make this change here modules and then we have two dash layouts just like this layouts all right let's save that you'll see nothing uh, bad is happening here there's no errors being thrown yet so that's perfect all right so what we just did here by importing each of these directories is something similar that we're going to do inside of each of these folders. So anytime I make a file, let's say, let's do this in the layout. So if I make a file in here and call this, let's just say index.sass, because this is going to be for my index page of my website. What I have to do at this point is come over here to my two dash layouts underscore directory dot sass file and import this right here because because this is the directory for this entire uh, folder so I'm going to import this and it's just going to be indexed because it's in the same folder all right so that's imported so now to actually get this into our website, something we have to do is we need to create an assets folder. So I'm gonna come over here and write uh, new folder. Let's just call this assets, no underscore. And inside of there, another folder, and I'm just gonna call this CSS. And then inside of the CSS folder, what we're going to do is we are going to write new file. And we're going to call this styles.sass. And then up at the top, we need to uh, add some liquid code up here so that Jekyll processes this. And we need to go ahead and import. We need to go ahead and import our styles, which is looking for this uh, right here in the SAS, so it's looking for this. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure we don't have any errors. No errors, great. Let's refresh this, make sure everything's still working and everything is still working. So let's go ahead and try and write some code here uh, in our index.sass that we wrote. Let's see if, let's grab our index file, our HTML, see we wrote this to the class of YouTube uh, tutorial, so we're gonna call that right here. And let's just say width, uh, if I can type, width of 500 pixels, a height of the same thing, 500 pixels, and a background of pink. Let's see if this is working now. This regenerated, 
and you'll see that did not work. And the reason this did not work is because we're not pulling in that um, CSS file that we have here. So if we just go ahead and write this, uh, link relative style sheet type text forward slash CSS. And we're gonna write the href as curly brace, curly brace, site.base URL, curly brace, curly brace, forward slash assets, forward slash CSS, forward slash styles.css. Now, yes, we are calling CSS here, even though we wrote SAS here, because Jekyll is gonna process this because of the liquid code up here and turn that into a CSS file. So let's go ahead and save this and refresh and see if anything changes. Look at that, all right, it has changed. It is now 500 pixels wide and 500 pixels tall with a background of pink. So what I want to do right now is delete this layout and let's see if it just loads this right here. All right, now we have hello world, but it looks like we're having an error. It cannot find this because we actually need to run the liquid code here. So we'll add that back in and refresh. And now we have this working here. So if we look at the code here, Here's something else that I want to show you. If we click on this uh, styles.css, you'll see this is the CSS that we just wrote. Well, we wrote it in SAS, but this is the output that we get. Now, something cool that you can do with uh, Jekyll is in your underscore config.yaml file, you can, you can essentially minify your SAS. So if we come down here and write style and say compressed, save this and restart our server, now, if we come over here and reload our CSS output, you'll see it has all been minified. And if I had a lot of code, you would see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you like the content that I'm creating on this channel, head on over to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash Zachary R. Newton, where you can help support me and help me create better videos every week. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.